song. It's uh, from Northern Ireland, and um, it's based on a song called the Gauna Gala, um, but it's a song about the first milk of the young heifers, and they're talking about the bright white heifers, and apparently in their first milk is very creamy and sweet and luscious, and so it's much sought after. Our next song is a children's song. We're going to be doing a number of children's songs. And this one um, is in an interesting kind of archaic Cork dialect. There's a lot of nonsense syllables in it. And I don't know if the light is uh, bright enough now that you can kind of see your programs, but on some of the songs, there's actually a singable chorus. Um, you may laugh hysterically, and so may we, at the idea of a singable Gaelic chorus. But if you feel at all um, 
uh, courageous, please feel free to jump in. Um, I've highlighted the choruses that we're going to be singing in um, you know, bold type so that you know which ones maybe you might try. But feel free to just la 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 or hum or whatever you want to do if you feel so moved. So this is considered to be a walking song, not like walking around, but like a, a song um, that was used, the beat of it was used for walking cloth, fabric, where you stiffen it, um, you put it in a vat of chemicals, you take it out, you stretch it, you beat it, and things like that. And it's thought that this song might have accompanied some of that kind of thing. Brooke, and, well, and Pat. 
So we're now going to do a song um, that's actually a Scots song. And this might be a good time to point out the fact that uh, when you're dealing with um, a problem like the unhoused people who are pushed off of their land, out of their homes, uh, there's always a reason for it. Ireland is a culture that very much understands that. Uh, and a lot of us uh, who are actually standing here right now are standing here because uh, our ancestors, in my case two generations back, were pushed out of Ireland because of uh, things to do with being pushed off of your land, out of your home, uh, out of your house, etc. And so um, just wanted to kind of point that out. Now this is in our program, this is our only Scots song. Everything else we're doing is an Irish Gaelic, this is Scots Gaelic. Um, they're very similar and they can understand each other, but, you know, a little bit different. This is a song that was sung by a bunch of women singing in a, in a circle, uh, doing something to do with weaving, most likely. They could be carding, or they could have been weaving, and they're telling tales and joking around, and they have a little bit of a naughty song to sing, and that's this song about Donald, uh, He's Looking For Me. <coughs> Way. <laughs> is anybody in the speaker? Is our monitor on? I'm just finding it's hard to hear. Oh, and I should point out, 
this is called a Shruti box. It hails from India, and it's used by singers who sing in styles like the Shandos style that we're singing in, unaccompanied, just one line, in order to get all the nuance of the line. Um, and you're doing it against a drone. And so that's the idea. So you'll see a lot of Shandos singers these days pulling out their shruti boxes. Not exactly Irish, but it does suit you know, the, the, the purpose. On Shanda uh, a song about a, a situation that probably arose quite a bit in rural Ireland where you had young girls being married off at very, very young ages. Uh, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16 would have been common. Uh, so this is a song about somebody who was very uh, upset to find themselves married to a gentleman quite a bit older than she is. In his check and his car, and you'll be happy to run with his teeth on her nail. The dirty a can of a cloth in a turn of his children, and we like a sack on in Oga. Oh, the one that a hundred of dogs is all a hundred of spark of boss. Oh, the one that a hundred of dogs is all a hundred of spark of boss. Oh, the one that a hundred of dogs is all a hundred of spark of boss. which that tune originated from. Um, well, we're moving on to a little suite of children's songs. The first one is a lullaby, and these children's songs are often teaching songs. So in these two songs, the first one's called Anini, Little Bird, and the second one's called Tanatic and Droli, The Wren Has a Nest. 
So they both, uh, you'll hear the names of all the birds being named throughout both of those songs. And the first one also very much has the flavor of, of a lullaby. You can just hear somebody rocking their baby, either in the cradle or in their arms, as they're singing this song.
over here, and Brooke is playing the Bowron. And very well, I might. <laughs> we're honing in on it. I know that the, it's a, a late evening, and it's even later than you were all expecting. Uh, we've only got a couple more songs for you, and I hope you'll hang in with us for them. This next one is called Mali Naguhni Hulanon. I love the way it starts out. He says, drunk I will no longer go. Okay, this is promising, <laughs> but then he goes on to say, since my lovely wee girlfriend who I love so much has left town, <laughs> and she used to, you know, fill my pockets with money. So he, in other words, he can't buy any beer because she always paid for the beer and she's left town for a while, and he's hurting because he can't have any beer. My heart bleeds for him, you know what I mean? <laughs> so here we go. Uh, <laughs> It's Father Lamb, who we are in the sea. It's Father Lamb, who we are in the I'm trying to keep my talking at a minimum because you've heard a lot of talking tonight and it's all been great, by the way, everyone who was speaking was very moving. Um, but I do want to say just a, a, a little bit about the Irish language because it really went the way of many other things in Ireland as people were pushed out of their land uh, and were pushed, I guess you could say, from the east into the west as far as the traditional arts go. The music and the dancing and all of that, you can find much more um, evidence of the language now being spoken as a first language on the west coast of Ireland. It's broken into Gaeltachs, they call them now, that's a Gaelic speaking area. There's one up around Donegal, there's one around Connemara, um, and Galway and Clare, that area, and then there's one way south uh, where Cork and Kerry kind of meet there, and so you have three distinct Gaelics, but at one time the entire island spoke the same Gaelic. And that was all the way up through the 16th century until it was systematically and mean-spiritedly dismantled uh, by outsiders who shall remain nameless. <laughs> and so we'll just say uh, the language has made a, a, a comeback, but it's still uh, very, very small compared to how it was back in the day. So moving on from that, just to give you a context for, for the language and for maybe even for the reason for this group, I think, um, as far as my perspective, and uh, you know, you can talk to the singers, but uh, just keeping the, the culture, the Irish language alive. I know a lot of Irish people uh, in this country who don't even know that the Irish have a language, that we actually spoke another language, hello. Um, and so uh, it's a big deal to me, um, and probably to a lot of people who are of Irish heritage. Um, this is a funny song, and it tells you a lot about the Irish sense of humor that I'm saying it's a funny song. If anyone saw the movie uh, Inish Annan, 
then you'll know uh, what I'm about to say is true, uh, that the Irish have a very, very dark and black humor. And if you saw that movie, you'd know you would be ripped like this the entire time. Uh, and had went on, and uh, this is a song that has that kind of flavor to it. So it's a woman who's lamenting that she was not the one chosen by her, uh, the person she loves. So he married someone else, and so the, the song is actually called Ban Fa Jean. A malicious little number. <laughs> And the difference is, again, goes back to what I was saying earlier about you girls being married off very young. So in this case, this g gentleman has chosen an established woman. She's probably 20. <laughs> she's your granny, she's your granny, she's old enough to be your granny. And that's what the, the, the young girls of the town are taunting him with. That's what the chorus is. Uh, she don't want moi, she don't want moi, she's your grandma, she's your granny. That's, the, that's what this is. <laughs> She's 
Thank you.